What's up guys, it's Widgeon TV here. Today we're going to be going over the best practices for farming gold crowns. So for the uninitiated, gold crowns are given to you every time you kill an especially large or small monster. Normally around 25% either bigger or smaller depending on the crown. And you might be farming them for a few reasons. But I think the main reason everybody is farming them out there is for the PlayStation 4 Platinum Trophy. It is easily one of the hardest trophies to get in the entire game. But you could also be farming them for the sake of completionism. Either way, getting all of these crowns is a very daunting task. So here are some of the best practices for farming gold crowns. So at the beginning here, I'm going to be going over some of the more quick tips, and then at the end, I'm going to go into more of the in-depth stuff. So make sure to stick around. So while gathering these crowns, you're undoubtedly going to be killing the same monster over and over. Mainly because you see a monster and don't really know if it's a gold crown or not, you're going to want to kill or capture it just to be sure. And to ensure the monster that you're looking for is going to be there, you're probably going to be using a lot of investment. Investigations. Now we're going to be going over how to choose the best investigations for this later in the video, but sometimes there will be multiple monsters in the investigation that you choose. So when you load into that area and find the monster that you're after, and you think it might be a gold crown, you can kill or capture it, and then you can return to HQ without having to kill the other monster, but while also retaining that gold crown that you may have got. You do this by opening up your menu and selecting Return from Quest. Now do not hit Abandon Quest. That will wipe out any progress that you have made made while you're on this map. So any items that you've gathered, or any pieces that you've carved, and most importantly that gold crown, you will lose it all. So make sure to select Return from Quest. That will potentially save you a lot of time in the long run. Alright, next up we have the Event Quests. Now these rotate every week, and there is almost always a quest that will guarantee a crown on a select few monsters. Now this is very important, but you probably already knew about it. But you probably didn't know that Capcom keeps a calendar of these Event Quests updated on their website. So if you're smart about it, you can plan out the monsters that you're going to farm ahead of time. So let's say you see an Event quest that has a high probability of spawning a monster that is gold crown size, and you see that one of those monsters could be a Barith, then maybe you should skip farming Barith this week and focus on a different monster. I'll put a link in the description to this calendar so you can keep up to date on it. So next up, let's talk about tempered monsters. So with every resource that I've found, and with my own personal anecdote, there seems to be a wide consensus that tempered monsters do not increase the chance of that monster being a gold crown. But even if it was the same chance as a normal high rank monster, then you should still avoid them. Them. Because if you finally do find that extremely large monster or extremely small monster that you've been looking for, and you very unfortunately run out of time or get killed too many times, then you lose that gold crown and you cannot get it back. Now this is still a chance with normal high rank monsters, but obviously since it is tempered, there is a much higher chance of this happening. So in my opinion, you should completely stay away from tempered monsters. So now you may be asking, what kind of investigations should I be looking for? There seems to be a wide ranging consensus that you should be picking an investigation with at least a gold and a silver reward, and obviously it should be high rank. And again, with my own personal anecdote here, I never found a gold crown monster in anything other than those. So now that we've gone over which investigations you should be using, this does bring up another problem, and that problem is, is what happens when you run out of those investigations. This is definitely a major problem, especially for the Elder Dragons. Getting consistent Elder Dragon investigations is pretty hard, and since investigations can only be used a few times before they run out, you'll be wanting to generate a lot of them, but obviously that would take a lot of time, so we can get around this a little bit. So here's what you're going to want to do. So you're going to want to do this before you start farming for any particular Elder Dragon, but after you have the correct investigation for it. What you're going to want to do is close Monster Hunter World, go to the dashboard and click Option on Monster Hunter World. Then go to the Upload Download Save Data, and you're going to want to upload your saved data. Now this is a good idea for anybody playing Monster Hunter World to make sure that you don't lose your data, but now you can open back up Monster Hunter World and you can go farm for those Elder Dragons. And when you eventually run out of that specific investigation, you can go back to the dashboard, download your save to data, and do it all over again. Now you'll notice every time you start one of these investigations that the data will save automatically, but it only saves to your hard drive, and your other saved file is in the cloud, so when you re-download it, the game thinks that you never even did those investigations. This can save a lot of time and hassle when farming for these crowns. You can also use this tactic for the Elder Melder, like if you don't like the gems you got, you can re-roll with this tactic. But it's not called save scumming for no reason. Use this tactic sparingly. 
Now, the last major piece of advice I can give you is to measure all of your potential kills. This can save you from killing a lot of monsters unnecessarily, but unfortunately, measuring is not a perfect science. What measuring consists of is running up next to a monster with your ghillie suit, placing a shock trap, and then standing next to its leg. You can then judge the size of the monster more accurately, because you have your height for scale. This is useful because sometimes you're standing back far away, and you can't really properly judge the size of the monster, or other times the monster is doing attacks, or doing doing some animations that don't properly show off the monster's height. I will put as many resources as I can find down in the description below for different size charts and examples of gold crown monsters, so make sure to check those out. Alright, that's all I have on gold crown farming. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and consider subscribing. It really helps out my small channel. Also, consider following me on Twitter. It's the best place for me to keep in contact with you guys. But anyway, this has been TV. Thanks for watching, guys.